Yo, what up? So in the last video, we created this nice clean login screen from scratch. So now we're going to use this to actually log in as well as log out using Firebase. So there are two things before we get started. The first thing is I've already connected this project to the Firebase. So if you haven't already set it up, then make sure to watch that video first, which I'll link below. And we're going to use this Firebase auth package to help us log in and sign in users and things like that. So make sure to set it up first. And the other thing is in my previous video, we created this login page, which is this UI. So I created that from scratch. So make sure to check that out as well. But essentially just to keep everyone on the same page, it's just a big column. And I've just got a kind of logo, some text widgets. And the important things here are these two text fields. Okay, so we've got a email text field and then we have a password text field. And then we have this decorated container, which is our sign in button. So using these three things, we're going to now try to log in a user. And from the UI that we created, we need to make one very important change, which is if you actually toggle the keyboard, then it creates this bit of an overflow problem. And so a very easy fix is to just wrap the entire column in a widget called single child scroll view. And so if you save this, it should just take care of that little overflow problem. So make sure to add this widget on top of the overall column. So the first thing we need to do is to create the controllers for these text fields. So if I come over here, let's create our text controllers. So the first one is going to be the email controller. And then the password controller. So we have to give this controller to each of these text fields so that we can keep track of what's inside once, once the user types something in. So if you look under this email text field, you should be able to see this controller that we can specify. And let's do the same thing for the password. Cool, so now if the user types something then we can use the controller to get access to what's what the user has put inside the text field. Cool. And the other thing we need to do is once the user types some password in, we want to click sign in. And in this button, we kind of you just used some containers and text widgets to decorate this up. So what I'm going to do is wrap this with a widget called a gesture detector. And on the tap function, we want to create our sign in method. So we haven't created that yet. So let's do that now. So future sign in. And let's await the Firebase auth instance. So Firebase auth instance, and there should be a sign in. You can see here, sign in with email and password. So this immediately requires us to fill out a couple of fields here. So the email, we're gonna give our email controller. And this controller, we want to grab just the text. And also one useful thing to do here is the trim. So this one just helps us format the text. So we're going to do that for this password as well. Cool. So once the user signs in and they click the button, this method will be called and we're going to try to sign in with the email and password. Cool. So if you come back to our console and you go to the authentication, let's go to the sign in method. 
and you can see here there's a lot of different ways to sign in so we want to do the email and password so make sure you selected that one and make sure it's enabled just coming back to our code one thing that we should do which i almost forgot is to dispose of these controllers just to help our memory management so dispose them when we're not using it awesome so now that we are asynchronously just checking if we can sign in or not we now have to go to the main function and right now we're just directly showing us the login page right so first of all i'm going to go to the library and i'm going to create a new file called main page and this one is just going to be used to see if we're logged in or not okay so main page scaffold and in the body we're going to do a stream builder and we're going to check a non null user and let's specify these things so the stream first of all so you can say firebase auth dot instance let's make sure to import this guy and listen for any auth state changes and then in the builder let's give our context and the snapshot so this snapshot gives us the information for the user okay so let's do a little check here and say if the snapshot has data then let's return our home page and then else let's return the login page so just to explain what we've just done we're currently checking for any auth state changes okay and an auth state change would happen when we try to sign in so if we sign in and it currently has a user in there then let's return our home page and otherwise just return the login page okay so we haven't created this home page yet so let's just quickly create our home page so this would be the page that's inside your app once the user has signed in so let's just keep it real simple so it's just a stateful widget and let's just give it a blank scaffold and say signed oops let's give it a text widget and just say signed in and now we can import our home page and also in the main function instead of just always returning the login page let's now return this main page cool so just to summarize again what we've done once the app fires up we're going to go to this main page and this main page is just checking for any auth state changes so basically checking if we're logged in or not and so if the snapshot has data so if we have a user then let's return the home page and otherwise if there's no user right now then just return the login page okay so if you go to the firebase now let's try to manually create a user so make sure this email and password is enabled and in the user let's manually create a user so let's say mitch at gmail.com password one two three so in the following videos i'll show you how to uh, create the user directly from the app which we're going to need to do but just for now let's manually create this user and see if we can log in cool so we've got this user now and let's just save this and in here let's give this a go so mitch at gmail.com password one two three cool so it signs us in and brings us to this home page and you can see it says signed in we can't really see it so let's put this in the center and now we're signed in and just to make it even better let's say final user equals to 
Firebase auth.instance and current user. Cool, and then let's put this text in a column. And I'm going to say actually signed in as and then let's put the user email here. Cool, it's actually all scrunched up at the top. So let's change this ac access alignment to the center. And there it is. You can see here it says signed in as the email that the user has. Cool, which brings us to the next step, which is we should create a button here so that the user can sign out. Right, so I'm going to create a quick material button and then on the on pressed, all we need to do is say firebase.auth instance and sign out. Let's give this button a color and then just say sign out okay let's save this cool so we're signed in as mitch at gmail.com and then if i sign out then you come back to this login screen awesome so it looks like our app is able to log in and log out now one thing is i think the password it needs to be obscured so if you go to the password text field you can see obscure text is true and that's just for the that's just for the password to be obscured in like asterisks like that. So now I can sign in and we're signed in as Mitch at gmail.com and we can sign out. Cool. So there's still a lot of work to be done. So in the next videos, let's actually create a user, right? In this one, we manually created it and we were able to log in and log out. But in the next one, I'm going to actually register user. So you can see at the bottom, if you're not a member and I click register now, I want to bring up a register page and create a user on demand. Okay, and then we'll update it to our Firestore automatically. So look out for that one and play around with this. And if you have any problems, just let me know. But other than that, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.